Hey, welcome back to graph theory. <clears throat> in this lecture, we're going to wrap up our work in section 9.1 on planar graphs. And in particular, I want to tell you a little bit about um, some bounds that you can make on the size, the number of edges in a planar graph. All right, so you can see the outline there. Uh, what we're going to do is establish proofs of two of the results in this section, 9.3 and corollary 9.4a. I'm not really sure what the a is about, but the author puts it there. Um, we're going to, well, reestablish, but maybe you'll like these proofs a little bit more, the non-planarity of K5 and K3.3. They're just going to be consequences of those two theorems. And then I want to tell you about something called maximal planar graphs and triangula triangulations and kind of characterize triangulations. This, I'm kind of trying to address some of the remarks uh, in the, the author's section that starts the number of edges in a planar graph. He kind of makes some remarks about triangles. And in my opinion, the author's being a little bit sloppy there because he doesn't make some restrictions that need to be true to, uh, to, to justify some of his results. So I'm gonna kind of just try to tell you what I think about that in, in terms of this notion of triangulation, okay? So I'll try to keep this video short. I'm going to talk fast. As always, you can pause it anytime you like. Think about what I'm saying. Go back uh, and also uh, write me emails and correct my errors. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by recalling Euler's formula. Euler's formula, usual notation. You got a connected planar graph with n vertices, q edges, and f faces. Those in the three numbers are related by this beautiful expression. n minus q plus f is 2. It's a constant. Um, I think it's worth noting that Euler's formula implies that no matter how you draw a planar graph in the plane, it's always going to have the same number of faces. Because when you draw a graph, you never change its order and you never change its size. The drawings are just the way you in draw or informally the way you embed it in the plane. And uh, any two embeddings of a planar graph of order n and size q have to have the same number of faces, namely because Euler says that that number of faces is 2 minus n plus q. All right, so, so two people realizing uh, two different embeddings of, a, of the same planar graph, they have to have the same number of faces. All right, so our work that we're going to use below is going to use this notion, uh, the length of a face. Uh, uh, for most planar graphs that you're probably imagining, the length of a face is a very natural thing. It's just the number of edges in the closed curve that surrounds the face. But, but uh, uh, if the graph isn't connected, uh, uh, you have to be a little bit more careful. So let me try to get you to swallow this definition. So the length of a face in a planar graph, the length of a face, it's the total length of all the closed walks. And yes, I'm putting plural, all the closed walks that bound that face. All right, so what am I talking about here? here here's an example. I've got a graph down here, let's call it G. G looks like it's C3. C3 has two faces, an inside and an outside face. Uh, both those faces have length three, because if I look at face one, the closed walk that bounds face one has three edges on it. One plus one plus one is three. If I look at F2, that same closed walk is bounding face F2. F2 is, is an unbounded face, but its boundary are those three edges. So, so they both have length three. All right, let's look at my uh, uh, friend H over here. H is this disconnected graph. It has two connected components. It's two, two C3s. It's uh, what, what would we call it? Uh, it's C3 union C3 in the, in the graph theoretic language. All right, so uh, uh, just like before, face one has length three. It's bounded by a closed walk three. Uh, it's the only closed walk that bounds it. Uh, face three has length three. The only closed walk that bounds it is that three cycle. But in this graph H, phase two has length six because there are two closed walks bounding phase two. There they are highlighted in red. And this, their total length, the total number of edges is three plus three or six, okay? So this notion of length of a face, you have to kind of account for. If the graph is connected, uh, you don't have to worry about using more than one walk. However, I am saying walk, not cycle, because let's look at this example down here. This graph, uh, uh, it doesn't have a name for graph. Let's call it K. You could even call it K2. It's a complete graph on two vertices. Um, it just has one face. Every tree just has one face, yeah? So the, the length of the closed walk here is two, because you have to have a closed walk. 
and you keep track of all the edges you traverse. So the length of that uh, uh, face is two. Okay, so that's what I mean by the length of a face. In a kind of an ordinary planar graph where you don't have any of these sort of, uh, uh, I, I don't know, and it's, uh, the, yeah, it's the, you just count the number of edges around a face, but, but you have to count closed walks, okay? So uh, uh, yeah, here's my remark. If G's connected, then every face is bounded by exactly one closed walk. So you don't have to worry about this phenomenon, but you do have to do closed walks because that graph K right there, it has no cycles. You can't define it in terms of cycles. So here is your author's theorem 9.3. Uh, uh, in the proof of the theorem in your book, the author never mentions that N needs to be at least three. He states it in the statement of the theorem. Maybe he just leaves it implicit. Uh, that it's true, but uh, uh, it certainly has to have a graph. Uh, I, in fact, maybe pause the video and write down some counterexamples to this theorem if the graph has two or few ver vertices. It's not, it's not necessarily true. But what the theorem says is that if you have a connected planar graph that has order at least three and it's got Q edges, size Q, then the number of edges is never more than three N minus six. Okay, so this is an upper bound on the number of edges in a planar graph. And it kind of makes sense that, that there should be such an upper bound. Well, I mean, certainly the number of edges is bounded at all, but, but in planar graphs, you know, if you have too many edges, it's hard to be planar, right? So a graph of order n, you remember, could have as many as n choose two edges, much larger than three n minus six. So planar graphs, this is a much smaller upper bound. Okay, let's walk through the proof here. So n is at least three. So every face uh, uh, has length at least three. Yeah, if you have at least three vertices, then every face in your graph has to have length at least three. It's true even for disconnected graphs. Uh, 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 let me just kind of give you the spirit of this. If, if this is my disconnected graph of length, uh, uh, sorry, of order three, it's just got this one face uh, uh, and what is the um, length of that face? Um, well, it's the length of the closed walks around it. There aren't any edges, so these walks are sort of degenerate, but here's the walks. There's one right there, there's one right there, and one's one right there. So that face has length three, okay? If you wanna modify this example, maybe, maybe this is your disconnected graph. What's its uh, uh, length of that one and only face? Well, this walk is two, this one is one, two plus one is three. So if you have at least three vertices, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about connected graphs, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, every face has at length at least three. So in a planar graph, every edge is adjacent to exactly two faces, Jordan curve theorem. So uh, if you summed the length of all of the faces, then you would count each edge exactly twice. So the sum over all the faces of the length of the face is gonna give you two times the number of edges. Yeah, but every one of these summons is at least three. So that sum is gonna be at least three times the number of faces. Uh, I do a little bit of algebra. You can deduce that the number of faces is no more than two thirds the number of edges. And then we pipe it into uh, Euler's formula. Euler's formula says that for this planar graph, two is n minus q plus f. I'm replacing f with two thirds of it. Uh, uh, oops, typo. Fix the typo on the fly here. I'm replacing f with two thirds q. I'm replacing f with two thirds q, making the quantity bigger. Yeah, two thirds Q is bigger than F. So if I replace F with two thirds Q, I need to make that quantity bigger. Then do a little bit of algebra, minus Q plus two thirds Q is, is one third, uh, negative one third Q. Some more algebra, you can stop the video and check this out. Uh, 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 end of the day, you get the Q is less than or equal to three N minus six. That's what we were trying to prove, All right? So there's an upper bound on the number of edges or the size of a, of a planar graph of order N. And uh, I want to use this right away to give maybe a more satisfying proof than we gave the last time that K5 is not a planar graph. K5 is not a planar graph. How do I know it? Well, N is five, uh, uh, so, so three N minus six, uh, check my arithmetic, it should be nine. 15 minus six is nine. But uh, uh, K5 has 10 edges, its size is 10. And 10 is not less than or equal to nine. So if K5 were planar, then uh, uh, 10 would be um, less than or equal to nine, but it's not. Cool, so I like that better than the hand wavy uh, drawing chord proof that we gave last time.
try to try to unleash this thing on K33, it won't work. Right, it's not an if and only if theorem. It just says if the graph is planar, something is true. But for K33, its order is six and its size is nine. And unfortunately, if you take three times nine, uh, that's uh, 27 and subtract six, that's 21. Uh, so, sorry, uh, wrong number. Three times six is 18, minus six is 12. And nine is less than or equal to 12. All right, so I'm not claiming that this proves K33 is planar. Of course, it can't prove that. I'm just saying that that theorem that we just proved isn't strong enough to, to prove that K33 isn't planar. So we need to improve it a little bit. Uh, here, here's a general definition, not just for planar graphs, but any graph. I'll call a graph triangle free if it has no subgraphs isomorphic to C3. So it's got no three cycles in it. It's triangle free. Okay, K33 is triangle free. Any bipartite graph is triangle free actually because bipartite graphs can't have any odd cycles. In particular, they can't have cycles of length three. Okay, so our second theorem, this is our corollary for 9.4a. I'm just gonna call it a theorem uh, for simplicity. If you have a connected planar triangle free graph that has at least three vertices in it in size Q, then Q is no more than two N minus four. And we don't have to belabor this. What's the, the proof? If you're triangle free, then the length of any face is at least four. So you run through the same argument, maybe just pause it and, and, and run through it. Don't listen to me, but you run through the same argument. The sum of the lengths is twice the edges. Uh, uh, if everybody has length at least four, then that sum is gonna be at least four times the number of faces, because I'm summing over the number of faces. All right, so do a little bit of algebra and you can arrive that the number of faces is less than or equal to half the number of edges. Pipe that through Euler's formula, uh, replacing F with this quantity that's known to be bigger than it, one half Q. Do a little bit of algebra and there you go. Q is no more than two N minus four. So pause it, check my math, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. But for this one, we can prove K33 is non-planar because uh, it's got six vertices and nine edges, but nine is not less than two times six minus four. Nine is not less than eight. Yeah. So, so there you go. There's a proof that K33 isn't a planar graph. It's coming out of these edge bounds. Okay, so I'm gonna end this, this uh, uh, hopefully short enough to concentrate through video with a little, uh, um, kind of comment about what the author was talking about, about uh, uh, adding edges and having triangles. Uh, uh, he says that uh, if you wanna have as many edges as you can have in a planar graph, you should make sure all of the faces are three cycles. And it's true, it's true. Let's take a look. Um, so a couple definitions. I'm gonna call a graph maximal planar. If it's planar and it's not a spanning subgraph of any other planar graph. So it's sort of, uh, it's, it's a planar graph, but if you tried to insert so much as one more edge, uh, uh, you'd have to have a crossing. It's a maximal planar graph. Uh, a triangulation in a planar graph, uh, sorry, a triangulation is a planar graph where every face is a three cycle, okay? So I've drawn a picture down here, K4. K4 is a triangulation. K4 has four faces and they are all three cycles. There's three of them. The outer face, its boundary is a three cycle. Okay, so K4 is a triangulation. Here's a little graph called G. If you watch the number file video, you saw um, Professor Tugnowski uh, uh, tell you what the name a graph theorist called this graph. They call it the house. It's actually a super fun uh, uh, exercise to show that the house is actually the graph theoretic complement of P5. Take, take the complement of a path of length five and you get the house. It's kind of a cool exercise. Uh, uh, but anyway, it's not a triangulation because, well, I see that it's got a face that's not uh, a three cycle. It's got this one. Maybe you can also see that it's not maximal planar. Yeah, I can imagine a planar subgraph uh, 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 I, I, sorry, I can imagine a planar graph for which G is a spanning subgraph. Can, can you, can you see it? Maybe you put in this edge. Okay, I've modified G. Uh, now I do have a triangulation. Every, uh, excuse me, no I don't. No I don't because the outer face, 
the outer face is not a three cycle. This outer face is a five cycle. So it's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a triangulation either. That graph is not a triangulation. I increased the number of faces that are triangles or three, the boundaries are three cycles, but this outer thing is still not. Yeah, so, so you can kind of see because of that, you could add another edge. You could add another edge to that graph. Okay, uh, uh, when I just added that new edge, that face is a three cycle. What about the outer uh, face now? How many edges are on it? One, two, three, four. That outer one is a four cycle. So, so, so that graph is still not a triangulation. And I'm gonna leave it here. You could pause the video and play around with it, but could, could you add another edge to that graph? Is that graph a subgraph of a, of a, a spanning subgraph of a planar graph? I think you can. I think you can add another edge. Uh, remember when you add edges, we're not, we're not allowed to do stuff like this. I'm not talking about multi-graphs, yeah? So when you add your next edge, you can't add it between vertices that already have edges, but you can add it between vertices that don't. All right, so I'll let you kind of play around with that. Pause the video and play with it because the next theorem is gonna kind of answer the question. But so I claim that for a planar graph G with, with order N, the, the following three conditions all mean the same thing, okay? Uh, uh, one is that G has exactly three N minus six edges. G has exactly three N minus six edges. The second one is that G is a triangulation, that every face is a three cycle. The third one is that it's a maximal planar graph. It's not a, a subgraph of a planar, a spanning subgraph of a planar graph. So in other words, the author is kind of right that if you had a planar graph that you couldn't make any bigger, all of its faces must be triangles because if it has some faces that aren't triangles, you can always add one more edge, just like we did with this thing and this thing. And in fact, I think you can see that you can add one more. You can add one more. Okay, so how to prove this? Well, let's let Q uh, be the number of edges. Uh, and let me just kind of write some if and only if statements here. So uh, uh, you can pause this and kind of look at them yourself. But Q is 3N minus 6. Uh, this is just a little bit of algebra rearranging. And I'm, I'm trying to be a little clever. Instead of writing minus Q here, I've written minus 3Q plus 2Q. But you have to admit that that's equal to minus Q. Okay. And then I'm dividing everything by 3 in the next line. And then uh, uh, I have a planar graph. Uh, uh, so this expression 2n minus q plus n, well, like we said, this must be the number of faces. It must be the number of faces. It's the only number that can go there to make this equation true. And Euler's formula says that's the number of faces. So if 2 thirds q is f, that's equivalent to 2q being 3f. So I'm using Euler's formula. And that means that every face is bounded by a three cycle because you remember that 2q is the sum of the face lengths. So if the sum of the face lengths is three times the number of faces, then every face had to have at least exactly three edges. All right, so that shows that A is, is equivalent to B, uh, uh, that you have three n minus six edges if and only if you're a triangulation because your face is being bounded by a C3 is, it means you're a triangulation. Uh, to get the other two, we'll kind of think uh, by contrapositive, if you like. Um, if uh, you're not a triangulation, so you've got a face uh, of greater of length greater than three, then we could add an edge to that graph to obtain a larger graph and, and introduce no crossings, right? So if you are not a triangulation, then you're not maximal and vice versa. So, so that shows that B is equivalent to C. So, so these are ways to kind of think about uh, whether or not your graph is maximal planar here. Let me see if I can just put this in view and let's do the counts. Uh, um, we've done these counts before, but for K4 here, we've got what? N is four, Q is six, F is four. We don't need F, uh, but, but I can write it. So uh, uh, check it out. What's three times four minus six? Well, three times four is 12. You take that away from six and you get six, that's Q. Yeah, so K4 is a triangulation. It's a maximal planar graph. 
let's take our little, not G here, but what, whatever this thing with the two new blue edges is. Uh, uh, it's got five vertices and it's got one, two, three, four, uh, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. Yeah. So if we take three times five and subtract six, that's 15 take away six, that's nine. So that graph can take another edge. We can add one more edge. It's not maximal planar. It's not a triangulation. And you added this edge a long time ago. I'm about to add mine now. There you go. If we add that new edge, then Q, which looks a lot like my nine, is nine. That graph is maximal planar. And you can check it out that every face, even the outer face now, watch, it's a triangle. There's one edge, there's two edges, there's three edges. So there's a maximal planar graph. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>